Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for some music and entertainment news, mostly music today. And since we were just getting back from London, we were off Monday. This is a story we would have done on Monday, most likely, with Saturday Night Live that relates to the Oasis show and the show's coming up at Soldier Field. So... Saturday Night Live's Sarah Sherman and James Austin Johnson dressed up as Liam and Noel Gallagher on the weekend update where Colin Jost is there, Michael Che. And they asked about the concerns that Oasis wouldn't be able to remain intact during their upcoming reunion tour. Now, Liam Gallagher replied on Twitter, but we'll first play the audio from Saturday Night Live uh, of what we just described. Thanks for being here. Now, everyone's wondering, are you guys going to be cool to tour a year from now? It's not a hard no, it's a maybe. <laughs> it's a maybe. Uh, if oh Liam boy. doesn't act like a baby. <laughs> I'm not a baby, you're a baby. Yeah, you're a baby. You're a baby. You're a baby. You're a baby. <laughs> stop, oh, he stuck his tongue at me. Colin, did you see that? Colin, Colin. he's been naughty. He's been naughty, Colin. He's been naughty. He's been naughty. Colin. <laughs> there must be something that you both agree on. I guess there are a few things, yeah. SpongeBob. Legend. Legend. Is the best Ninja Turtle. Oh. Donatello. Donatello. Legend. Legend. And there must be things you agree on besides cartoons. All right. Favorite Sex in the City boyfriend. Steve. Steve. Legend. Legend. <laughs> Least favorite Sex in the City boyfriend. Mr. Mr. Big, Big Toxic, toxic Legend. Legend. <laughs> I am Legend. 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 Double Legend. Oasis, everyone. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's fantastic. Uh, so Liam Gallagher replied on Twitter to the Saturday Night Live post and said, are they meant to be comedians? <laughs> He's great on Twitter, by the way. You should have a Twitter account and only follow Q101 Chicago and Liam Gallagher. Those are the only two good Twitter accounts there are. Especially when the Jane's Addiction stuff was going on the falling apart. He was so funny in that. But that was a funny bit, though. They're very funny. Sarah Sherman is the best cast member they've got now. I oh. love her. Yeah, she's great. Oh, oh, she's fantastic. That was amazing. And by the way. Everyone else loved it. He did a mean retweet, but everyone else is laughing. <laughs> like, no, they nailed it. Those are very funny. Speak. Speaking of Oasis, yesterday, was that right, Case? Was yesterday. The, was the 30th anniversary of Q101 presenting Oasis at the Metro in 1994. And there's audio of it that's available that sounds really surprisingly good because they actually recorded it on the soundboard, right from that soundboard. So this is a pretty legendary show, and I think this is worth talking about because of the Oasis reunion. It was 1994. Q101 brought Oasis to Chicago for the very first time. They played the Metro it was a late night show. It started at 1130 at night. There was actually a show at the Metro beforehand, and then they got everybody out of there, and then Oasis came in and played. Tickets were $6. What? And they played this, what is considered to be a legendary show. Our friends at JBTV recorded it and broadcasted it, so it's on YouTube. It's actually on Q101's Facebook channel today. For hardcore Oasis fans like myself, this is considered to be one of the greatest shows they ever played. And here's a little bit of what it sounded like at the Metro 30 years ago yesterday. Wow. That's incredible. It is. That sounds really good. It's <laughs> so good. That full concert, like I said, if you want to watch that full set, it's on Q101's Facebook page right now. It's incredible. It's the first time they were in America, first time they played Chicago. Q101 brought it to you 30 years ago, and uh, hopefully we see everybody at Soldier Field next year. Last Woo! time they played the Metro, too. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. God, if anybody was at that show, please check in at 312-591-8300. You know what also happened that year? The first year of Q101's Twisted Christmas, That's 30 right. years ago. What a year 94 was. It might be, and I say this as somebody that is obsessed with finding new bands, but 1994 might be the best year in music history. Yeah, and you weren't even alive. I was not. I was another, Either. Another <laughs> five years before I hatched. Amazing. You missed all the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Taking the baby to the Metro to see Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an incredible good find there, and uh, what a great anniversary this week, actually, with, um, with all that's going on. Um, some more music news. So Linkin Park has finally announced their first date. Now, we're hoping for some sort of date here. I'm, I'm guessing it could be Soldier Field down the road, but the mm -hmm. first time they're performing now with a new lead singer, and we had talked to Mike Shinoda, by the way, about a month ago, me and Kenzie did, and that interview's up on all of our socials and our YouTube channel, and make sure you find that at Q101.com. So they're playing Sick New World, which is a 
crazy festival in Vegas that's going to have Metallica and Evanescence and Queens of the Stone Age and about 50 other bands. And they also are going to have Lincoln Park as one of the headliners there of that Sick New World show. It's going to be April 12th, 2025. And uh, that's the first show announced of the rebirth of Lincoln Park. Yeah, yeah, for 2025. So they're coming. I don't know when they're coming to Chicago. They're going to start in Vegas. And I think they're going to make their way over to Chicago very shortly after that. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they will make it. Other uh, bizarre news I saw today, music news, that um, Alex Van Halen. Van Halen's my favorite band of all time. Mm -hmm. And Alex Van Halen's the drummer. Sadly, Eddie died four years ago. And he, wrote, he has a book coming out, so he interviewed in Rolling Stone. And he talked about... Obviously, they went David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar. Ozzy Osbourne had a chance to be in Van Halen after Gary Cherron from Extreme did the one bizarre, you know, one-off that everybody, you know, mocks and pans as Van Halen. So they talked to Ozzy Osbourne around the year 2000 about joining Van Halen. Mm -hmm. How about that? First, let that sink in for a second. And the reason it didn't happen is because they were working on the Osbournes. The reality show that, of course, took over the world in the early 2000s. And because they did the Osbournes, Ozzy didn't join Van Halen. Wow. What a show. How, well, I think I got to look at it now. What would be better, being the fan of the band? I could not live if Osbournes didn't exist, <laughs> I don't think. So I think they made a better move in going with the show than him joining the band. Just because of my age, most of what I know about Ozzy Osbourne is from the Osbournes. That's right. Like, that's that's my, my pool of knowledge for the most part of him. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, that's you know, <laughs> that, that's a good place to start with Ozzy. So uh, it didn't exist. Yeah. So if that show didn't exist, I, I think that was the right move. Also, in this book, he talked about an interview with Rolling Stone that they jammed with Chris Cornell in the late 2000s, and they said it was going great. And even though Soundgarden was touring then, mm -hmm. Van Halen was going to try to steal Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Really? And sadly, this is the time when Chris Cornell passed away. They said it probably could have happened. Maybe Chris wasn't super happy with Soundgarden. Who knows? But Alex said they did a jam session that they were sold on. They were going to try to talk him out of leaving Soundgarden. And then Chris Cornell died in 2017. It was right around that time. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that insane? That's, that's a wild world to think of happening. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. And, and more in the rock world, if we will, here. Last story in music news. Jakey e. Lee was a guitar player for Ozzy way back in the day, like in the 80s. Great guitar player, by the way. And he was out walking his dog in Vegas, so he hasn't. he's not with Ozzy now. He's out walking his dog, and he got shot. Just total random shooting. Now, he's expected to make a full recovery. He's 67 years old. He's out there walking his dog. When two will Diddy stop? <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. A reminder once again, tomorrow at this time, Ticket Puts Thursday, it'll start at 8, but at 9, we'll have tickets for night two of Q101's Twisted Christmas with the All-American Rejects. You get a very, very special performance from Andrew McMahon, uh, and you get the Maine and Dexter and the Moon Rocks. At 8 tomorrow, we will do Cage the Elephant and Bronze Ferdinand and almost Monday. That is the... Night one of Q101's Twisted Christmas. So eight and nine tomorrow right here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. All right, the Blackhawks last night, the last game before the home opener tomorrow night. They lost to the Calgary Flames. Um, might as well give a stat about the Flames. That was their best franchise record. They actually bested it of 4-0, uh, and oh, meaning they've never started a season with four consecutive wins except in 2010. So uh, I guess good for the Flames. I had no stamp for the Blackhawks oh, on this good one. good for them. But tomorrow night, the home opener at the Madhouse against the Sharks. It will be rocking. I'm so upset that the Bears didn't get Jim Cornelison to fly to London and do the anthem. If you watch the Bears game 830 in the morning, I'm not even sure if it was broadcast. Were the anthems broadcast on TV? Because we were there at the London game. I taped it, but I haven't gone yeah, back and watched it. I wanted to watch it. because my mom brought up how cool she loved, like, the flags folding in and out with people in the center. Yeah. And she was not in London. She was watching the children. So <laughs> I, know that she, I know that it was broadcasting. Well, the American the national anthem was done by a, a great lady, a country singer who sang it, and then when they did God Save the King, they did the UK anthem. The entire venue of all of the English people sang along loud. It gave me goosebumps. And I had FOMO. I felt like we lost the anthem war. We lost the anthem. Yeah. You taped the game? I taped it so I can watch it. I haven't had a chance to do it no, yet. No, no, no. I know why you taped the game. Why? 
in case you came up on the screen. You watched it back to check, didn't you? That's not true. Yes, it is. <laughs> you look for your fast forward. The whole thing is yeah. always your face. I know it. He's, he's fast forwarding plays of the game and yep. just fast forwarding to crowd shots. That's it. Ah. Show me. Show me. <laughs> Show me me. <laughs> well, Janine and Chesterton checked in and agrees with me that if we could have got Jim Cornelis in there, who does the Blackhawks anthems, never been to a Blackhawks game, well, everybody stands and sings along and screams, and that would have beat their anthem. Yeah. And yeah. instead of us just sitting on our hands listening to the Star Spangled Banner. You know, Brian, we fought a war against them. The best <laughs> thing we could do is out-anthem them next time it comes up. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> and Janine and Chesterton agrees with me. That uh, I wish they would have done that, but maybe there was a conflict with the Blackhawks. Their singer was really good, though. He, like, boomed. He was awesome and very chilling on the arms there, the goosebumps. But also, our singer was good, too. Our singer was good, but it was different vibes. It yeah. was, like, a soft, pretty thing, and his was, like, like in your face. Well, <laughs> I wish we all could have came to an agreement that, are we singing this or not? Are we? Because I would have stood, I would have sang, I sang it, like, under my breath, but I would have sang loud the Star Spangled Banner if everybody was going to do it. I don't know if that would have helped us win. And I think the English won. We won the game, which is more important. Woo! So, that's all right. I just feel like uh, we lost an opportunity there. Well, the song's not a banger. That's the problem. Which I, one? I, the, our national anthem. You uh, know. pretty. Theirs is pretty. Theirs kind of slaps, That's the thing. Ours, I like theirs. Ours isn't. I love it. I love what it stands for. <laughs> I'm pro anthem. It doesn't sound like it. But it's not a great song. It's hard to sing. It is. It's hard to sing. You can't sing along because it makes it sound worse. Whatever. It's like, ah, ah. Like, like, oh, you lost all the power. Yeah. Um, something is happening tonight in Chicago sports that hasn't happened in two years and nine months. My, my baby girl Harper is two years old and she's never seen this. Lonzo Ball play basketball. Think about it that way. Uh, devastated. A thousand days. How could he do this? He's made about $40 million in that almost three years to lost sit on the bench. Lost a podcast, too. Yeah, he launched a podcast while he wasn't playing. What is it called? I, oh, I can't remember. It's like bench warmers. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I'm very pro Alonzo, like, figuring out how to how to play the system. Yeah, I'm, I'm for the Bulls winning. I'm pro that. And I'm, <laughs> hold on, hold on, I mean, that to be Hold on. His, his podcast is called What an Experience with Lonzo Ball. <laughs> what has he experienced? A lot, because he's not busy with work. Yeah. <laughs> he's experiencing everything. Imagine if you didn't have a job, everything you'd experience. He talks about the nice restaurants he's eating at in Chicago. <laughs> I, I wish the man well. He plays tonight. It's a preseason game, so he'll probably play like one or a couple series and then just be out of there. But I just want to see him shoot. I, I wonder if he remembers how to shoot a free throw. Does he remember the rules of basketball? It's like riding a bike, I think. I don't he think so. He remembers the rules. Not that long. That's pretty long. Um, exciting news for the Chicago Bears coming back from London, 4-2 and two in the bye week. So the week after this weekend, the Bears will play Washington Commanders at the Commanders in D.C. That game, because it's so popular right now, because the Commanders have Jaden Daniels, who's killing it as a freshman quarterback. Same with... Caleb Williams on the Bears. They have flexed that game to 325, a more prime spot than the noon kickoff, and moved the Eagles-Bengals game to noon. My wife was going, boo, being an Eagles fan. But uh, pretty awesome, and that's going to be that's going to be wild. It'll be Jim Nance and Tony Romo handling that game, too, on CBS. They got the good announcing crew, and I can't wait. I mean, the Bears are rolling. That is a must-win game, as they say. So we talked about... The anniversary of Alonzo Ball playing basketball, another anniversary, another great anniversary oh. in the history of Chicago sports that relates to the Bears. And what this is, is 18 years ago, the game happened. 2006, the Bears at the Cardinals, the 20-point comeback to beat the Cardinals, and it led to the late Dennis Green's rant after the game at the press conference, which very well could be the greatest sports rant of all time. You may not know much about where this audio came from because it was 18 years ago but this is the glorious rant from that game four picks against grossman and two fumbles what do you see about the bears that would shut them down that way no we you know i mean we, we just uh, let's, we, the bears are what we thought they were what, what, what we thought they were <laughs> we played them in preseason who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's <laughs> bull <laughs> we played them in the third game everybody played three quarters the bears are who we thought they were and that's why we took the damn field. <laughs> now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. 
but they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We're going to have to pour one out for another Chicago legend, which we hate doing. But first, other local stories let's get to real quick. Um, a rare endangered large cat was captured after being reported on the loose in Hoffman Estates, uh, right near the Hillsdale Golf Club. It was prowling around there. I guess it's called a, a carousel cat. A and, carousel cat? Yeah, and what they think happened was somebody bought this cat, either online or somehow under the table, and they had the cat. As it got bigger, they just let it go because they couldn't handle it. This is a cat that, we could, that could kill you. Uh, and they let it go, and it was roaming around Hoffman Estates for days, and they did catch it yesterday, which is good news. So, you know, you can go outside and not worry about getting attacked by a cat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I it's looked like, up. Yeah. Uh, I think, is it C-A-R-A-C-A-L? Yes. Not like carousel, I see. I don't know if it's pronounced carousel or not, but um, it's, an okay. enda- it's an endangered animal, and it's rare, and some people like to buy these things online. You can do it, yeah. and then... They can't handle it, and they just release it instead of doing the right thing. But they bought it illegally, so they can't really turn it in anywhere. It's a medium-sized wild cat native to Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and areas of Pakistan. And Hoffman Estates, apparently. And Hoffman Estates. Yeah, very nice. Maybe if I hit more, it'll pop up. Maybe it's the last one, Hoffman Estates. Can you imagine that cat getting released, and he's used to those parts of the world? He's in Hoffman Estates, which is a beautiful suburb, but... Oh, that's a big boy. Yeah, they're very lucky that they caught this thing before it hurt somebody's Woo! pet. It could have could have easily killed a dog or worse. So they got it. They got the pet. So you can go out in Hoffman Estates now. It's all safe in Hoffman. It's all safe there now. Oh, look at those ears. So you Woo! want one. Well, you're the person that's going to buy that and release it. Yeah, where things put that cat? <laughs> <laughs> they got to take it somewhere. Um, I think they're taking it to some reserve in Wisconsin. It has like, a lot of room up there, up to, there to play Wisconsin. around. So another local story. We missed this when we were in London, but apparently last Friday in broad daylight, people robbed a train on the west side. That's a bummer. Have you seen this on the news? It was um, a railway car. People were just stealing TVs off of it in the middle of the day, and no one stopped them. There's a camera that caught it, a security camera. But then these TVs started showing up online, so whoever stole them just immediately put them up to sell them on on eBay or whatever. Um, You ever bought anything that you didn't know that fell off the truck well i bought speakers from a guy out of a van and it felt cool i know they were probably stolen and that's not good let me advise to not do this because i bought um airpod pros that fell off the truck and i started to think maybe they actually fell off of the truck because they didn't noise cancel and they didn't connect and they just <laughs> like maybe that did happen these are the most ass airpods of all time now when you say fell off a truck did you buy them on the street or online Some I knew was like I have a bunch of AirPods and I'm like cool. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds reliable. Yeah, right, fell off a truck and now I think it did. Like I was like this is horrible. Well, I can say the subwoofer I bought lasted a long time. It, it was, was great. Good, good yeah, it was really good. Uh, I saw the video of them stealing off the train and what a long game. The confidence. It was a long walk to the train and then you had to get on and pick out a heavy item and then slowly walk back to your car. Mm-hmm. No, no fear. one even, like, drove by in that amount of time. <laughs> it was like, well, that's illegal. And I even, don't understand. And even the camera that caught everybody, I don't know why someone couldn't have been watching live and go, uh, hey, hey, there's someone taking all the stuff. <laughs> Maybe go in there. Like, you probably, I just feel like you could have gotten there faster. Yeah. Very odd. Well, you know, buyer beware. If you see a nice priced TV online, uh, be careful. It could have been that from that train. And then finally, we've got to pour one out today, sadly. This one hurts for a lot of people out there. Chicago iconic Jelly Belly, the once famed family owned candy company known for its signature jelly beans has closed its North Chicago plant. The company announced the plans of the closure in July and that made it 66 layoffs expected with that plant closure. It was acquired of course by another Chicago candy maker, Ferrara Candy Company, in October of 2023. And why make jelly beans over there when they got their own plant to make jelly beans? And we just slapped that Jelly Belly name on them. Wow. I'm not saying they're evil people. I'm saying, you know, sure, eat the candy however you can. It's just sad those 66 people lost their jobs. Oh, it sucks. 
I'm not a jelly bean guy. I can't see you being a jelly bean guy. No. So I, I know you pretty well. I can't see you saying, hey, give me those jelly beans over there. Right. I can. You can't imagine Brian shoving his very large hand in a bag, <laughs> and then, like, you, he would turn his head back and then let all go to his mouth like a, like you know like gather mm -hmm. and then it'd be one big chew he wouldn't pop one in his mouth that's true he'd down a box <laughs> boy i thought you knew me <sighs> like the rattle <laughs> i i like chocolate treats i like chocolate candy I, right. I I despise jelly beans, actually. That's why I can't get emotional about this. I feel bad I for the people who lost their jobs. I by the fistful, shove nuts of trail mix in your mouth every day, which has raisins in it. It does. I like that kind of stuff. I don't like jelly beans. Mm. Case is right on this one. Are you anti-bean? No, uh, you're not. You love beans. I love pinto beans. <laughs> He said with authority. <laughs> okay, so what he does is he gets a can opener and he tosses his head back. Yeah. Well, are you a jelly bean person? I, they're fine. Oh, okay. You're not big on them either. No, they don't. I need I need something to go one way or the other. This needs to be super sweet. It needs to be really sour. Like, I can't. You'd pre prefer a Starburst, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. What I about, like a lot of chewy candy. What about you, Case? I, I love them. I don't know. I can't believe I'm with two jelly bean slanderers right now. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take jelly beans. I'll take Mike and Ike's. I'll take dots. I like anything that is really hard to chew. And I would put the jelly beans in that category. You know what I really hate? What's that, Kenzie? Good and plenty. Oh, the good and plenties are a bit of a disappointment. That's because they're, oh they're mint. God. Right? They're mint. No, mint. they're not. They're black licorice. Oh, that's right. The black, candy coating. Yeah, black licorice. Oh, the opposite of mint. I don't, I don't like that want, either. They're not good, and I don't want a bunch of them. Like, I don't want a plenty. It's the worst name ever. <laughs> Get well, out of here. Mike and Ike's are, like, cherry-flavored and stuff like that, right? They got a few yeah. different flavors. They're very yeah, they're, colorful. They're shaped like Tylenol. Yeah, and they, are, flavors. They're in the they green are box. shaped like Tylenol. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I've had Mike and Ike's. I just, I, and you're right. The other ones, I always thought for some reason I was thinking mint, but black licorice, I don't yeah. love that either. Yeah. Those, I don't like the good and plenty whatsoever. No. So I feel bad for the 66 people that got laid off on this plant and all the jelly belly people that got, you know, shafted in this deal. I just can't pretend emotion right now because I, I don't connect to the jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry if it's not coming off sincere. I just have a hard time with their flavor guide on the back. They have the pictures of their flavors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some of the jelly beans are marbled, if you look. And when you're back, you're like, is that straight up green or is this the marble? Like, is it watermelon or lime? Like, their guide isn't as direct as I'd like it to be because I like to organize my jelly beans. And oh, then, boy. Oh, listen. I like to put them in their own flavor category and then have, like, say there's three buttered popcorns <laughs> or three watermelons. Because then you get the, uh, like, it's impactful if you chew, like, four or five of them, the flavor. Right. So I don't want to throw in a lemon into my watermelon quartet and then just F the whole thing up. Well, it all sounds really reasonable. Go see a doctor. <laughs> you never use the jelly bean flavor guide? No. Wow. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And Lauren coming in fresh back from Italy. Boy, we sound all very international, don't we? Mm -hmm. We're back from London. We're cultured. Lauren back from Italy. Case back from Kansas City this week. Happy to be here. I felt, I felt that was unnecessary, Brian. <laughs> ah, I felt it was necessary. <laughs> all right, let's get to your takeaways from today's show. Uh, 312-591-8300. Case, what do you got? Joe and Downers Grove checked in. His takeaway Never mess with a whittler. <laughs> Wise words from Joe. Uh, Kenzie, what do you have? 219 texted in. Take away. If you, hold on. If you lose your job in the jelly bean industry, don't expect much sympathy from Brian since he doesn't connect with jelly beans. You don't. <laughs> I connect with people, but jelly bean, the industry itself, I don't... It's I, not working for him. I'm fine if it goes away. You have a lot of questions about big jelly bean. That's yeah. the problem. You don't trust that entire industry. Follow the money. It's what I always say. Ask questions, famously. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, 708 takeaway. Kenzie will never buy a racist pink candle because it clashes with her color scheme. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to know what these conversations were all about, you go to the podcast, Case, what's on that?
Well, today, Brian and Kenzie talked to a chocolate milk enthusiast. You might never look at milk the same way again. There's also a riveting discussion on the Q101 Facebook page right now about whether or not we should be judging adults who drink milk. Mm. That is on Q101's Facebook page <laughs> right now. Uh-oh, we opened a can of worms. We also learned that whittlers are not to be messed with. That conversation is on the podcast. And this morning, around 6.30, we learned that Brian lost out on millions of dollars because he didn't listen to his father. Facts. It's been a tough morning for Brian. We had that conversation, that and more on the Brian and Kenzie podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, whether it's Spotify or Apple or the newly redesigned Q101 app, it's free to download and it makes it really easy to check out the podcast. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.